I've said it before and I'll say it again. Social media is designed to be misleading. Most people only post the most positive parts of their lives, leaving out their struggles to make themselves seem like the best person or the best parents with the best family. We have seen even when parents actively abuse their children, all they post on Facebook or social media is photos of them all smiling and laughing together, portraying the image of a happy, uncomplicated family. But as we know, there is almost always so much more behind the scenes that people don't want those on the outside to see, and that rings true especially with today's case. Today's case is going to be a rough one. It's one that I've been following since the very beginning, but I haven't wanted to cover it too early because I wanted to understand more about how and why this happened before sharing it with you. And while we still don't have all the answers that I would want to have in a horrific case like this, I still wanted to bring this case to you all and share the stories of these two sweet, adorable boys who lost their lives far, far too soon. This is the story of Jaden and Maurice. Nine-year-old Jaden Howard and his little brother, six-year-old Maurice Baker Jr., were born to their mother, 32-year-old Tiffany Lucas. Both were born to different fathers, but they were living with Tiffany in Shepherdsville, Kentucky at the time and for most of their lives growing up. Jaden's father unfortunately passed away back in 2019, but Jaden did have a much older brother named Durrell, I'm not exactly sure how old Durrell is, but he looks to be at least in his late 20s. According to Durrell, when their father passed away, he became a lot more involved in his little brother's life and in Maurice's life as well. According to family members, both boys were just so sweet, polite, and happy. They both loved playing video games, especially with Durrell, who again is Jaden's older brother. Maurice, who family members call Little Reese, loved playing soccer. He loved being outside and riding his bike around. Both boys were so precious and were so loved by everyone around them. <laughs> Y'all having a good time? card game that was it simple as that and then we had the best time the best time ever because i should have did more i should have if it, if it came to me coming to snatch the boys out the house i should have did that and i and i would hold that hold that on my back for the rest of my life for both of them boys i just know Jaden and and peanut i know they together and i know our father probably waiting on them Waiting on both of them. Now, if you were to look at Tiffany's social media, you would see that all she posts about is her children, self-love, and her journey to self-improvement and fitness. But most of all, she's constantly posting about just how proud she is to be the mother to her amazing little boys who are her entire world. For Jaden's sixth birthday, Tiffany posted to her Facebook, quote, Jaden is seriously the strongest and sweetest, most incredible little king I have ever met, and I'm not saying that because he's my child. Everyone who has ever met Jaden, loved Jaden, and been around Jaden will tell you. God took his time with Jaden. God knew what he was doing with this one. I'm so blessed every day I get to spend with Jaden, the countless hugs, cuddles, and conversations we share I could never take for granted. I love and admire Jaden every day, not just on his birthday. I love my kings different, and that's why Jaden and Peanut are different types of children. They are God sent and every wrong I have ever done or any hurt I have ever caused, I am so focused on correcting and loving them longer and deeper. I strive every single day for them, their happiness, their future, and their well-being. I cannot guarantee a lot of things in life, but I can guarantee the mother I will always be, the love I will always share, and the best I can ever give and do will be promised to you, my love, Jaden and Peanut. 
my whole heart and my whole existence is Jaden and Peanuts forevermore. In another post in April of 2021, she posted another photo of her two little boys with the caption, Upon watching them sleep, all the pain I endure in life is nothing compared to the blessings and love I get from them. Nothing can make my good day bad. True wealth is happiness. Smile, love, be happy, and thank God. Finally, in this year of May of 2023, for Mother's Day, she posted another appreciation post for her sons. She wrote, quote, Every day is Mother's Day in my world. I can only thank God for blessing me with the utmost respectful, compassionate, strong, silly, emotional, overprotective, obsessive, loving young kings that call me mommy, mom, and mama. I don't think I would know how to smile, love, or survive if it wasn't for them. Even on our bad days, they shower me with an abundance of love. Always together, never apart, three souls, one heart. Along with these posts, she has other shorter posts where she is constantly thanking God for her family and for how wonderful her children are. Her final post to her Facebook account was on Halloween of this year, 2023, with all three of them dressed up in Star Wars costumes. Even her bio on Facebook is Jay and Peanuts World Forever. Peanut is what the family would often call little Maurice. So clearly, on the outside, it appeared that she was a loving mother who literally put every ounce of her being into her babies. She loved them to bits and only wanted what was best for them. Are you walking? Are y'all shopping? Yeah. Go Peanut. Go Peanut. Oh, Tiffany was also once known as someone with a lot of ambitions who worked hard to achieve her goals and overcome whatever obstacles came her way. Back in 2016, Tiffany opened up her own small business called Miss Tiff's One Stop Shop, which was a convenience store located in Louisville, Kentucky. She had been interviewed by local media about her business and she talked about the struggles of being a small business owner basically saying that Walmart opened up nearby and was driving customers away. And it was really hard for a small business to operate when those big companies are so close by. Unfortunately, her business did not last long with the doors closing back in 2017, only a year after the doors opened. WDRB has been digging into Tiffany Lucas background to find out more about her. We learned that she was once a business owner whom we interviewed actually in 2016. She had just opened Ms. Tiff's one-stop shop convenience store on West Broadway. We spoke with her seven years ago about the impact as a young entrepreneur after Walmart pulled its plan to open a store in that same area. A lot of people don't make their way down here, but if there's a Walmart, you know, you come out of the woodworks for Walmart. So um, probably would have brought a lot of people to, um, you know, stop and check us out. Business records show her store closed in 2017. However, what Tiffany chose to show the outside world isn't necessarily what was happening behind closed doors. First, Tiffany did have some struggles that she didn't necessarily want to share with the world. She appeared to have a past history with drugs, spending at least one month in jail at one point for drug possession back in 2018. Other than that, between the years of 2014 and 2018, she had at least three interactions with police for drug violations. But again, she was only ever given one criminal charge of drug possession, which she pled guilty to, and again, she spent one month in jail. Since 2018, she hasn't been charged with anything else. However, when the boys were a bit younger, family members say that they were actually taken away from Tiffany for a short time due to her problems. She had tested positive for drugs, so the boys were taken away. But she always found a way to game the system, according to family members, and always was able to get those boys back. Other than that, we don't exactly know what drugs she was using. We don't know if she was clean at any point during this time. We don't know how recently she had used... As so many of us know, people can struggle with substance abuse, especially, in my opinion, opioids, and people around them will have no idea. People can hide certain drug problems pretty well, so I haven't been able to find anywhere what kind of drug she used or how often. However, according to Maurice's stepmother, Michelle, basically throughout Maurice and Jaden's entire lives, things were never normal. 
Tiffany always struggled with substance use, and when it came to Maurice's father seeing him or other family members seeing the boys, she was super inconsistent with what she would allow. He had a home with his father, he had his own room, and he had a little half-brother at the home. He had everything he needed over there, but Tiffany would never allow Maurice to see them. She would even keep Maurice away from family events on his dad's side. There were times that Maurice's father would throw him big birthday parties and have big Christmas parties, but Tiffany never allowed Maurice to go, even if the birthday party was for Maurice. It would either be that Tiffany made herself impossible to reach by ignoring phone calls and refusing to answer the door, all the way to her flat out refusing to let his dad's side of the family see him. She didn't want Maurice to have a relationship with his dad, his stepmother, or even his little half-brother. According to Michelle, Tiffany was incredibly selfish. Essentially, when it came to her posts on social media, according to Michelle, Tiffany was nothing like how she portrayed herself. She didn't want what was best for her sons. She didn't do everything she could to be a mother to them. She wouldn't get a job, she wouldn't work, and she struggled with drugs. According to family members, they didn't really know exactly how she made her money because she did live in a house and she lived on her own with her boys, but they thought that maybe she worked in escort-type services or something like that. Michelle would later say that they found some emails on Tiffany's computer that she would just leave open that sort of proved that she was working as an escort of some sort to make some money. She didn't seem to be interacting with the best types of people either, people who could provide her with weapons and drugs and things like that. In addition, family members say that she would leave the boys at home alone for extended periods of time while she was out. Not only that, but she would also leave them in the car and lock them in while she went out and did things. The house was dirty, and the boys just were not well taken care of by Tiffany. According to family members, they did try to reach out to CPS multiple times from the time that the boys were very young, but CPS never did anything. They told Maurice and Jaden's families that there was never enough evidence to prove that Tiffany was not a fit mother, despite the fact that she was actively using drugs, would leave them alone for long periods of time, and didn't keep a clean or sanitary home. So obviously, many family members are very frustrated with how CPS handled this or how they didn't handle it at all, and for their lack of care with these boys. Even a few friends of Tiffany's felt like something was off with how she just was as a person and how she treated her sons. According to one friend, Talia, she and her two children were with Tiffany and the boys just a few days before they were killed. They actually spent Halloween together. She said that things were totally normal that day. She said that Tiffany had always appeared to be a competent mother to her and she believed that she treated those boys well. She did believe that how she portrayed her life on Facebook was pretty close to accurate. She called them kings every day and constantly reminded them of how loved they were. However, outside of their children playing together and them being friends through that, Talia said that there was always something about Tiffany that rubbed her the wrong way. She said that Tiffany could get upset and angry very, very quickly, almost like flipping a switch. So, if the kids weren't around, Talia didn't necessarily always get along with Tiffany just as her own person, and she said that she felt bad for those children who had to deal with Tiffany's angry outbursts firsthand. Now, on the morning of November 8th, 2023, Tiffany was seen with her two boys outside of the house as the boys played in the front lawn. According to neighbors at that time, Tiffany appeared to be frantically cleaning the carpet. However, a few hours later that morning, a neighbor was pulling into his driveway when he saw Tiffany outside by herself walking down the driveway before she collapsed. At that point, he was concerned, so he went over to her and asked her if she was okay. That is when she told the neighbor that the boys were inside the house dying. Of course, the neighbor immediately went inside the house to see what was going on, and when he entered, he walked into a horrific scene. He saw Tiffany's two boys, six-year-old Maurice and nine-year-old Jaden, lying dead on the bed in a bedroom. Both boys were covered in blood, and lying next to them, there was a gun. 
Tiffany had shot both of her adorable sweet babies in the head. Police arrived to the scene by 11 a.m. and when they got there, they found Tiffany lying collapsed in her driveway. Of course, these officers went inside where they were met with these two deceased children as well as that gun lying next to them. Now, when police went inside that home, they found that the home was in a state of chaos. It was filthy on the inside. Several of their utilities had actually been shut off and there was an eviction notice on the home. So clearly things were chaotic and clearly Tiffany was not taking care of the home. After finding this horrific, brutal scene, of course, Tiffany was immediately arrested. Authorities then went around the neighborhood to see if they could find any cameras that picked up the incident, and they actually found someone who had a ring doorbell camera that faced Tiffany's home. I haven't been able to actually see the footage for myself, I've only seen it described, but in that video, you can hear the sound of four gunshots going off, one after the other, for about 30 seconds total. About five minutes after those shots ring out, Tiffany can be seen running out of her home before collapsing and yelling for help. Then we see her speaking with the neighbor, as I described. This footage confirmed that Tiffany was the only person inside the home when the boys were shot, so she had to be the person responsible. She couldn't claim that some intruder came in or something like that and shot them and then left because this footage clearly showed nobody else entering or leaving the home. When neighbors and police found those boys, they were actually still alive. So, first responders did anything and everything they could to save their lives. They attempted CPR and rushed them to Norton's Children's Hospital in Louisville, where they were taken into surgery. However, unfortunately, that was not enough. Both boys succumbed to their injuries and passed away at the hospital. Fast forward to Wednesday morning. I was cutting my grass. My next door neighbor, Jill, said, Bob, come around, I want to tell you something. And we saw the uh, fire up, uh, police up here. Around 11 a.m., neighbors who did not want to go on camera tell us Tiffany Lucas was outside and a person asked her if she was okay. They say Lucas responded that her kids were dying inside the home. The neighbor found them and called 911. Officers and deputies arrived at that location uh, to find that the uh, there were two victims in the bedroom and a gun on the bed. The two boys were rushed to the hospital in critical condition but died two hours later. After arresting Tiffany, detectives conducted an interview that lasted about three hours long. During that time, she told officers that she was in such a bad shot, saying that the shooting was actually an accident. She went on to say that she would never do anything like this unless someone gave her a gun and manipulated her. She said that she must have been controlled through Facebook, the internet, or through Wi-Fi for doing what she did. And we love them so much. So many other people really love them and could have been there to help them. But she wouldn't allow that. She was too selfish. <laughs> and now they're gone. Family members of the boys who sat through court Tuesday say they were good, happy kids. They should both be here today in school, going to school, learning, <laughs> playing sports. In court, Bullitt County Detective Richard Beal said after Lucas was taken to the sheriff's office, she was in the interview room for about three hours. I asked Miss Lucas if she meant to hurt her children. She indicated that it was an accident. He said she also told him no one else had been in her home and that she left the gun in the bedroom. She also made some comments um, such as, quote, I'm in such a bad spot, end quote quote, I'm so stupid, end quote, end quote, I would never do anything like this unless someone manipulated me, end quote. Nobody should, can manipulate you to do such a horrific thing. Nobody can, can, can manipulate you to do that. That's yourself. Beal also said there's surveillance clips from neighbors, one showing Lucas outside and the other that doesn't show Lucas but does have audio of what sounds like four gunshots. And approximately four minutes and 28 seconds later, Miss Lucas, Miss Lucas exit her home and yelled for help. The case now going through the court system. She showed no emotion. 
She shows no emotion. The day following the murders, November 9th, Tiffany appeared for her bond hearing where she pled not guilty. She was given a $2 million bail, and it was said throughout all of her hearings, Tiffany showed absolutely no emotion. She didn't show any remorse. She didn't apologize for what she did, and she didn't take any accountability. She was stone-faced through everything and refused to even speak a word. The boy's mother, Tiffany Lucas, is charged with murder. She pled not guilty in court. Judge Jennifer Porter set the mother's bond. And after reading through the citation, noting the charges specifically, uh, two Class A felonies of murder, the court is finding her to be a danger to others and will set a $2 million bond. With Lucas held at Bullitt County Detention Center, her two boys, known to play in their neighborhood, are gone from the yard and the sidewalks. It leaves the community wondering why. Horror. And what was she thinking and how did she get to the point that she was at? Was there no help for her or did she not want help or that's all? I mean, you know, something is clearly, you know, not right. Without knowing what went wrong, the only certainty now is the heartbreak felt at the loss of two beautiful, innocent lives. Of course, after the murders of those two precious boys, their families are left stunned and devastated. No one knows why this happened. No one can speak to possible motives here other than to say that she was always mentally unstable and not fit to be a mother. But even with that, we don't know if she was using drugs at the time. We don't know if she snapped. We don't know if she did this out of malice towards their father's sides of the families. We truly don't have those answers right now. We also don't know if she was abusing those children. One thing that stuck out to me when I was reading these articles was that she was frantically cleaning the carpet while the boys were playing outside on the lawn, and then it was just hours later that they were killed. I don't know if there's a connection, but I'm sure there is. I wonder if something happened where she hurt one of the boys and there was maybe blood on the carpet or something like that, or maybe someone had an accident. I don't know, and she was just cleaning the carpet, frustrated and upset for whatever reason, and... All of it came to a head and she took it out on those boys that day. That is one thing that stuck out to me. We don't really know any information about that because police haven't released any information related to that. In fact, police have not released a lot of information to begin with. So again, there are still so, so many questions that just do not have answers right now. However, with that being said, family members do believe that she intentionally killed those kids. It wasn't an accident like she claimed. You can't be manipulated into doing something so awful and so horrific. People have also said that they are frustrated with CPS's lack of care when they tried reporting their concerns. Again, they never did anything. There was so much they could have done to prevent this from happening, yet they did nothing. As for the investigation and what, if anything, Tiffany has said in addition to what I have told you, is being kept very close to the vest by investigators. We also don't have a lot of information regarding evidence or if there was a history of abuse or things like that. We don't know what they found in the home that could have been of significance. I'm sure they went through her social media and her phone to look at what she was telling people in the days before, so there could have been some sort of indication there. We don't have a lot of the answers and police are not releasing a lot as of right now. All we know is that Tiffany Lucas murdered her two young children by shooting each of them in the head for seemingly no reason. She won't accept responsibility and she has pled not guilty. She has no known history of mental illness besides the substance abuse according to the family and neither of the boys reported concerns to any other family members about her behaviors besides what we talked about. So again, in a lot of these like abuse cases, if there is abuse going on, one of the younger children might go to the other parent's house and be like, I saw mommy do this or mommy hit me or mommy hurt me or something like that. There was never anything like that, according to other family members, other than little Maurice saying that, you know, mom left us in a car by ourselves. Mom left us home for a long time by ourselves. We're watching each other, the two brothers. Things like that that I mentioned earlier where, you know, they were left at home for long periods of time to fend for themselves. 
which is neglectful, but I don't know if there was any physical abuse going on or any mental or emotional abuse or anything like that. Of course, the way she treated the boys was unacceptable, but unfortunately, just based on what I know about personally working with CPS and the system and taking courses on how it works and what can and cannot be investigated, I can see how CPS wouldn't see it as being abusive enough to take them away or to really look into the case very much further because if the only issues are drug abuse, then I can see them being like, well, as long as the kids are being taken care of, as long as they're alive, basically, and don't have bruises all over them, then they're fine. I could see that being the rationale for CPS. Not saying it's right, not saying that it should be that way, but I think that when it does come to these CPS reports and them not doing anything, that is what I think their rationale might have been. I also don't know why the courts weren't more involved with visitations with the fathers or their sides of the families. I don't know the extent of Tiffany's drug use or inappropriate parenting styles. These are answers that we will just have to wait on until we learn more from the trial that is probably going to take place. But that is all I have for today's video. This is a very recent and ongoing case. Like I said, we don't have nearly close to all of the answers in this case. So as I hear more, I will keep you all up to date. If there is a trial and more information comes out, I will probably make another video on this case. But for now, I want to hear what your guys' thoughts are on this devastating, awful case. What do you think the motive was? Do you think that we are going to find out more about possible abuse or something else going on? Do you think that Tiffany is going to try to claim insanity? What do you think of her claims that she was manipulated or tricked into doing this and that it was an accident? Let's discuss these and any other thoughts that you have in the comments below. If you liked this video, please make sure to go ahead and leave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I put out new true crime and mystery videos every single week. Don't forget to turn that notification bell to on so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Make sure you follow my Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. All will be linked down below. And if you have any case suggestions, please make sure to fill out the Google form, which is also linked down below. With that, I hope you guys have an amazing week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you next time. Bye!